Welcome to Bio Mutant. Look, an emergency box from the once was. A rare sight. Looks weak. The claw bar should come in handy. Uh. 
No, really, I mean it. Morks produce biomatter in their multi organ that they shed under distress. Globs that affect the cellular coding strands of any living being when absorbed, including you. can make something from that. Toxanol built vessels called Arcs to save themselves from the impending doom. But was it too late? It is only from the flight logs of the single Ark they left behind that we know other Arcs traveled through the sky and beyond. It seems those that came before us never lost hope in finding a new home for their kind. Toxanol built vessels called 
arcs to save themselves from the impending doom. But was it too late? It is only from the flight logs of the single arc that... Just a few moves left, make them count. Bolted shut. Locked. There are few records of the chain of events that led to the big apocalypse eons ago, but it's clear the world wasn't prepared for how recklessly the Toxanor Corporation would make its mark on the world. Their rare earth mining and nuclear industries generated tons of waste, and without consideration for the future, they dumped it all in landfills until they ran out of space. That's when they made the big mistake. They began dumping the toxic waste in the surf just off the coast instead, assuming that it would sink and decay with time. And they were right, but no one was prepared for what was about to unfold. Once in the surf, the radiation interfered with the genetics of the wildlife and created bizarre mutations in their offspring. It had an inconceivable impact on biodiversity and the entire ecosystem. The world as they knew it crumbled as nature retaliated. It would never be the same again, and what remained of it became ours. Pew Pew is never a good thing. It's coming from behind that door. A warning label. The box looks like a potential brain melt. It's going to take a bit of puzzling to short circuit the door. Just a few moves left. Make them count. There you go.
The wheeled one is outnumbered. You'd better help him out. Get ready. Right in the face. the last of them. Let's talk to the wheeled one before backup arrives. Scrapalicious. He wants to thank you for taking his side against the scavengers. He sounds familiar. You just can't figure out why. He presents himself as out of date. He knows he's way overdue, but he hasn't given up. He doesn't seem surprised that you don't recognize him. You were just a child back then, the night everything changed. There have been rumors of a one-eyed Ronin seen outside the Great Wall, and he's happy to see it's true. The legend of the one-eyed child that grew up as an outcast is old and sad. The child could have been anyone, but the evil it had fled had left a mark, a facial scar to remember the past. There's no doubt you're the child, and that what Lupa Lupin did to your village, your Moomer and Popsy, was the beginning of the end. He says it has taken you a long time to bring the past back up to the present, to find your way back, but he's grateful you have. It was after the attack that the unity fell apart. Your Moomer's disciples divided and formed tribes as a reaction to the blight that had fallen upon the land. Had it not been for the Tree of Life, no one would have survived. He hopes you at least remember the tree. Asks if you were tired, as it's a bit of a hike here from the village. He wonders if your Moomer knows you are here. You're such a good child, so you probably did. Even the young forget. He understands why you came all the way out here, to see them. The Potato People. <laughs> the Potato People, or Nono, are a wonder somehow interlinked with this little tree here, fueling its source of life. 
You might be right. Like potatoes, they're packed with energy, an excellent source of key. <laughs> the Nono prefer to hide in glitter grass. He says you should get over there and ruffle it. See if you can make one come out of hiding. You found one. You should be proud. They don't come out for everyone. <laughs> the Nono's key energy is just what the Pensai needs to complete its cycle. <laughs> the small tree you saw up there where you met will eventually grow into a tree of life and start giving back to nature. It'll be the heart of the land. <laughs> You'll need to support the tree for a long time to come. The only way it'll grow tall is with the burst of key released from the Nono as they become one with the tree. <laughs> You'll need a net to catch the Nono, and he wants you to use his, but asks you to be gentle. The Nono are sensitive beings, an embodiment of key, the primal energy. <laughs> <laughs> you handle that net like you've never done anything else. He's impressed. <laughs> One day, he hopes the tree will have grown tall enough to sustain the world. <laughs> But today, your focus is getting this one to become one with the tree. <laughs> now that you've seen the Nono's connection with the tree with your own eyes, you have no reason to doubt. <laughs> From this day on, he'll make nurturing the Pensai into a tree of life, a life goal. Not only for our village's sake, but for all of us, everyone. <laughs> One day, the land won't be as peaceful. Not even your Moomer will be able to protect us. He says you'd better hurry back to the village before your Moomer comes looking for you. No, she's got lots on her mind and needs rest after the raid last night on the Lupin camp with her disciples. Wonders if they let the Predator family live or not. He lost you there for a while, but no memory is alone. It's part of a trail you can follow. He says he remembers every single day he devoted to growing the tree of life, but now he's afraid it might be in vain. The tree started to die when the end of days begun, and it wasn't long after that that the World Eaters arrived. The genetic evolution that occurred after the apocalypse, the Toxinol Corporation.
His friend Gizmo is working on a Mekton and needs help defeating the Jumbo Pup at the end of the West Route. Wiz is still repairing his Octopod to confront the Merc Puff that dwells deep down under the surface at the end of the Northwest Route. Noko has tamed the Majut and is preparing to take on the Hoof Puff at the end of the East Route. Finally, Goop is almost done with the Goo Glide, a machine able to ride the waves of the surf all the way out to the Porky Puff at the end of the route to the southeast. Out of date, says his friends, are gearing up to stop the World Eaters. There's one at the end of each route. The road ahead won't be easy, but he's counting on your support. His friends aren't strong enough to end this on their own. He wants you to understand that you'll all die if the tree isn't saved. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the tribe war and the situation with the world eaters. Getting the hang of it. Quickest way out is through the roof where they came in, and the rope looks strong enough to climb. 